Well, as you can see there, we still have a flashing airbag light. We got the code for a airbag module. Now, I've replaced this three times. Yeah, three times, so I've given up on this. So what I did, uh, I went online and I searched and searched and searched, and I'll tell you what, these little clock springs are hard to find. Got this one here for about $100. It's uh, never been used. It still has a Nissan box with it. Um, these things go for about $350 new. They're hard to find. If you find a used one on eBay, then you're still taking a chance. You may have the problem like I've had here with this airbag light flashing. Now, um, in the back here, I got my other three airbags. And uh, I've decided to go ahead and keep these because these may actually still be good. Of course, one came with the car when it had the flashing light. And I bought the other two off of eBay thinking, well, I'm smarter than the vehicle. I know what's wrong with it. Well, apparently, these clock springs can go still go bad and go out. And you can still have a working horn. So that is the theory right now. These are all identical. You can see they have the orange and yellow plug on the back. So I didn't throw these away. So I'm taking a chance. These actually may be good. So... Um, I think I paid forty dollars for each one of these, so I am actually get one hundred and twenty dollars back here if I find out these are good. And I'll just resell them. And of course, we'll go ahead and hook up the OBT do code reader and check out the code. Give you the uh, number here. And of course, this is all being done now after I've got the uh, transmission seal, the uh, rear main seal, the oil pan gasket all back in. I actually drove this around with the out the front differential in it so I can look up in the oil pan and make sure that I had no more leaks in. I have a link here uh, on my video of how to drop that transmission in these Xterras and all that. But we'll let this scan here and see what we come up with here. I've cleared this code, but the light just keeps coming back on. All right, so we got two fault codes, one for the ABS and one for the Of course, the ABS is this G sensor, which sits right under here. I'm gonna take it apart, clean it, and resolder it. A lot of people have that problem. Of course, your ABS light is not on right now, but occasionally flashes on and off. The second one here is the airbag code light. Let's check that out real quick. And of course, the code there is the uh, G sensor, C113. We'll take care of that some other time in a video. By the way, there are some other videos on YouTube on how to take care of that. And of course, it says the driver's airbag module, so... And of course, we'll get a code for B1054 driver airbag module. So that's what we're going to try to take care of. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is go ahead and unhook this battery for about the 10th time this month. <laughs> I'm unhooking the positive cable because the negative cable uh, is kind of close to the fender there. And I can't get my ratchet in there, but I'll just unhook it here for now. And we'll let it sit for about 20 minutes before we go ahead and pull off that airbag. Get this off here out of the way. This battery, look how old it is. 511 of... Pretty old battery. Still going. Walmart battery. But I think it's about at the end of its life cycle. So I'm going to have to probably get another one soon. I'm going to do a test one first. But that's unhooked. Alright, let's get these little things out of the way. There's two of them, one on each side. And there's our 10 millimeter little screws we got to take off. All right, here comes this one here. Do yourself a favor. Do not mix these up. If you have one on the right and left side, make sure the one on the right side goes back in. I'm going to stick them on this side of the floorboard so I won't get them messed up because uh, sometimes these get, these really get cross-threaded and they become a real pain in the butt to get back into your airbags. So let's go ahead and get this one out. And of course, see, this one's a different one here because I've worked on it before. The threads are cross-threaded, so we got to make sure the bolts uh, go in on the right side that are originally in there. And, of course, here comes our other little bolt. And, of course, it's just there. I'm going to have to get my magnet. Thank goodness for magnets. All right. Now, I'm going to try to continue to use this same airbag since these screws were already in it. Um, I'll test the other airbags over time and I'll switch them around. But this is what we're going to use for now. So we'll put that screw on this side along with the magnet. All right, now we'll flip it down, and then we've got to take these little pins here out, little plastic pins, and I typically take a little screwdriver. This screwdriver is just a little too big for this, but pull these up like this. Get up under there and pull that one up. So 
so I'm hoping this will take care of the issue. I'm so tired of watching that airbag light flash on and off. All right, so there's this one. Just went out here. Careful not break them. And they had a update on these uh, pins here or something. I don't, I'm not sure I have to go back and see, but they actually had some of these would just, just pop out. But I think these have the updated clips on them. All right, we're making this harder than it seems like it should be. All right, there we go. All right, pull this one out here. Actually, I'm going to set the camera down and get that. There, there we go. All right, so put this off to the side. And like I said, this airbag here, this is the last one I bought on eBay for uh, 40 bucks. So there is our bolt that we have to take out. And our clock spring is buried behind here. And I'm going to check these wires real quick. Just verify that we have the right wires and everything. So it goes like that, like that. Brown, black, black wire right here. And we have this long wire here, which goes, let's see. Well, it, it actually goes back to the front. So yeah, this looks like it's the same thing. Yeah, cool. And you got a big plug in the back. Of course, we'll get to that when we pull the steering wheel cover off. So, all right, so that is that. And this is a genuine. Genuine Nissan Xterra clock spring. So, all right, let's get this off here. We're going to take this bolt off. All right, let's go ahead and get this nut off of here. This is going to be a three quarter inch. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with one hand on the camera, and we'll see. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, all right, there it goes. Boy, I was on there. I'm going to have to hunt up my wheel puller. I know I've got one here somewhere. I'm going to have to go find it. But, uh, I'm hoping this is indexed, meaning it's got a place cut in it, key or whatever, so I can put this wheel back on straight. Okay, I see a dot there, and I see a mark there, but uh, all right, let's see if we can get this off. So the fix for that issue, getting this steering wheel off, is getting a steering wheel puller for about 20 bucks. Different bolts. I needed a new one anyway to stack on my uh, toolbox. And there we got it all set up. And uh, you got to be careful. Make sure you get the right threads in there. These are all, I believe, standard. And I got a metric bolt in there. The, well, it's fine coarse thread anyway. But this is the one that works here. So we got it all set up. And I got my, uh, I don't know, what do I got here? It looks like I got a 5 8 socket. So hopefully this will pull straight off. And I checked my marks. So uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll try to get the wheel as straight as we can on here. So let's go ahead and kind of. See how this works. Oh, came right out. Gosh, I probably could have just pulled one of it. I don't know. Probably could have saved myself 20 bucks. But that's okay. I like buying tools. We all like buying tools, right? It's a guy thing. Man thing. <laughs> all right, so tell you what. We're just going to leave all this, all this on there. So, oh, came right out. All right. Hey, I like that. I like it when a plan comes together. So we'll just slide this all away. And uh, there's kind of like the setup. They give you two little washers. Make sure you use those washers on the those bolts because it keeps it uh, from chewing up the uh, arm. Let's stick this over here out of the way. All right, so there is what we're taking off. And now we got to take this plastic here off. A couple of bolts on the bottom here, and we can take this off and get into it. And before we take that off, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to focus this camera as close as I can. See that little tiny mark right there? That's the only mark Nissan gives you. And on the steering wheel, there's a little tiny mark. And I noticed even that was a little offset. So I kind of made a note of how that was kind of offset. So I put the steering wheel back on there straight. No indexing marks whatsoever here, except just a little scribed mark right there. So, yeah, I was afraid of that. So be careful about that. Pay special attention to that little mark. And let's see. I don't know. Well, actually, on this, it's a little tiny dot. See that little dot? Yeah, I'm probably doing a poor job. The top there, a little tiny dot right up here. Let me get my screwdriver and point at it. And I move the camera like crazy, like a madman. That little tiny dot is right at the end of my screwdriver. Boy, is it right up there? A little tiny dot up there. <laughs> That's all you got to reference this thing when you put it back together. All right, nevertheless, let's go ahead and see if we can get this off now. All right, actually, we had two hidden screws down here I didn't see. There we go. All right, there it is. I actually had this off not long ago. I was trying to put 
uh, intermittent wipers, but the switch plug is wrong, and I'm still working on that. I'm trying to find out where the other plug goes and where the relay is, but that's another video. All right, so we got this out, and I noticed the part number here exactly the same as this part number, which is uh, perfect. So this is a genuine uh, Nissan clock spring. So now all I got to do is take out these four little screws here. There's four of these are Phillip one, two, three, four, and pull this straight off. All right, one more, and out you come. There you go. And pull it straight off. And I know there's another wire in the back here. I got to unhook that one there. And that's it. So let's go ahead and get this wire off of here. All right, so you got to use a screwdriver. You got to get this gray one out first, and this one will come out. Oh, all right, there it is. I don't know, but I think my problem is in this. I mean, there's nothing else it can be because I know the crash bag, the system is okay. It's never been in an accident, and it wouldn't stay off three or four days and come back on if it wouldn't, uh, if it didn't have an issue with that SRS uh, crash sensor bag computer. Um, but anyway, that's off. Yeah, interesting. I see a little wheel in there. So um, let's look at here, match everything up. Looks good there. Gray bar. That looks good. That looks good, that looks good. And we got our little ground. And on the back, we got this big plug. And on the back, we got this big plug of this one. So, it's a match. All right, so let's go ahead and put all this back together and we'll see what happens. So I'm not gonna bore you. We'll go ahead and I'll, we'll bolt this up and wire it up and uh, we'll go ahead and stick everything back together. Pretty easy to do. Not gonna bore you, but make sure you don't move anything. Put everything straight back on the way it is before you do any turning. And you shouldn't have any issues. So, all right. So, let's go ahead and get this back on. All right. So, there's our last screw. Everything is exactly the way we took it apart. And if you notice this plug here, it's right here on the right-hand side. So, the steering wheel will go straight on. We didn't spin anything or uh, get anything out of balance, out of whack the way it should be. So, all we got to do now is put the steering wheel on and wrap the video up. So, hey, guys. Let me know where you're watching from right now. All right. Back and just a little side note, I'm kind of stumped here, and I don't quite get it, but this piece here that goes on here like this has this little hook on it, and it goes down on this back piece that doesn't turn whatsoever. It's mated on the main housing, but this front piece will turn well. Well, this other piece that comes up through the piece here on the steering wheel right here, well, it tries to turn the entire unit, and, of course, this piece broke off just like on my old one. Where it was broke off too so i'm not sure what this piece even does it doesn't make a bit of sense because it's like that and it goes down in here and snaps but it locks this up so i don't know maybe i'm supposed to bring the leave this off i don't know but regardless it's broke but my old one worked fine without it so i'm not sure why it has it and here's the uh, old one here you can see it goes right here this back piece doesn't turn it's like it's locked in here. That little piece right there where my finger is. But of course the outside turns, but it's locked, it's hooked onto this, so it doesn't make a bit of sense why that's keeping that like that. Although I got my arrows here right. You can see there's an old arrow right there where my finger is, pointing there to that one. So the, the clock spring itself is perfectly aligned. So I'm gonna do some research. I'm just a little puzzled about what that piece even does. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, all right, so we got it all back together here. We got to do is put the steering wheel back on. But if you run into this problem, beware. You can pull your steering wheel off. Look and see if yours is broke too. Not sure why Nissan even has that there. So I'll do some research and try to find out. All right, so we got the last four screws in. I'll put the covers on in a minute. We'll go ahead and start it up. I'm probably pretty sure I'm going to have to reset the uh, turn off the light manually with my code reader. There's the airbag light. All right, still flashing, so we'll go ahead and clear it and see what we get. All right, we still got the code. Go ahead and read the code. And, of course, it's a B1054 driver airbag module. So, we'll go ahead and just... 
clear everything out and see what we get here. I think I can leave the vehicle running and you can see the airbag light still flashing. <laughs> uh, no. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. So we'll clear it all. And hopefully we'll be done with this flashing airbag. So it says it's good. All right. Let's say okay. And let's go ahead and take the key out. Let's restart it. Let's see if it goes out. All right. There's the airbag light. It goes out. It flashes. Nope. She still flashes. So I am just lost right now. I can't see how we could have three bad airbags and I replace a clock spring and it still flashes. This is just nuts. Wow. Ten minutes, I went back in here and did some more code reading. I actually got to go off this time. So maybe I was supposed to erase both of them. I erased one of them, but I didn't get the second one erased. But hopefully that'll take care of that. So you can see uh, read codes here, see what we got. Airbag lights off. So what we're going to do, we're going to drive it a while. It says pass. Uh, system's okay. I've seen the airbag light flash on and off when I was doing it, but now it's back off. So it says system passed. No fault found. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to drive it a while. We'll drive it for three or four days. If it doesn't come back on within 100 miles, then I know I've fixed it. Now, maybe it was a clock spring, but I'm still stumped what this does. This little hook goes down in here but once it goes down there it catches and it's not letting this turn but i don't know but anybody if anybody knows what this is let me know but my turn signals work everything works no problem horn works so i don't know all right so i'll see you guys back here a little bit later when i know definitely this is definitely fixed so i can help you guys out all right, everyone, after about three days or so, well, I guess the problem now was fixed. Uh, apparently, I had to clear that secondary code because when I had the airbag unhooked, I turned the key on, had the battery on, just I was doing something, and it saw the uh, airbag wasn't hooked up, and it threw another code. So I had two different codes, so I've cleared them both. And now, uh, check this out. The airbag does stay off. Goes to show sometimes you just got to keep at it until you get the right things fixed. And you see the airbag on and it should go off it stays off so uh goes to show if your horn is still working it doesn't necessarily mean that clock spring is uh still good and you can see the horn still works and all that so it looks like i have three airbags in the back so i'm gonna have to uh, check and see if they're good more than likely they are that means i'll make 120 dollars i'll probably end up selling them for about 40 bucks a piece Oh, and by the way, I stuck my little chrome tip on there. I picked up for like a dollar at the junkyard. <laughs> looks pretty good, though. Yeah. So it looks like these airbags are good. So I'm just going ahead and check those. And uh, the other thing is I went online last night briefly and kind of did some research and found out this piece on other uh, vehicles. Uh, this is not even on there. They sell it to you just like this. So I think this was probably some kind of locking mechanism for shipping. So this whole thing doesn't spin around a bunch of times and mess up the uh, band inside here, the ribbon or whatever. So I'm not too concerned about that. So other than that, I can't think of anything else to tell you guys. So if you're having this problem, definitely uh, keep your clock spring in mind. If you change out your airbag and your light still flashes, more than likely it's probably your clock spring. So I am so happy this thing is fixed. Now I can go ahead and put some bigger tires on this thing, probably some 30 or 31 1050s. She runs good. I fixed the oil leak, pulled the transmission out, put new rear main seals in. She's bone dry under there, so I'm going to enjoy driving it for a while. So, guys, thanks for watching, and until my next video, I'll see you later.